Let's talk about adding and subtracting rational expressions. What is a rational expression? A rational expression is simply a quotient of two polynomials. In other words, it is a fraction whose numerator and denominator are polynomials. For example, 4u over 12u to the fourth v squared is a rational expression because its numerator is a polynomial and its denominator is a polynomial. Similarly, p minus 6 over 5 is a rational expression because p minus 6 is a polynomial, the constant 5 is also a polynomial. In fraction, you talk about similar fractions. In rational expression, we also talk about similar rational expressions. When the denominators of rational expressions are equal, in this case, we have 12u to the fourth v squared as the common denominator, then we say that these two rational expressions are similar. When the denominators are different, we have here a denominator of 5 and a denominator of p plus 5. Since they are different, then we say that these rational expressions are dissimilar rational expressions. Just like in adding fractions, we can only add or subtract rational expressions when they are similar. If the rational expressions are dissimilar, we are going to convert them into similar rational expressions before we can perform any addition or subtraction. So if you know fraction, our lesson today is very much similar to addition and subtraction of fractions, only that here we are now dealing with a polynomial numerator and a polynomial denominator. In effect, this is just an extension of what you already know about operations with fractions. And when you perform addition and subtraction of rational expression, don't forget to always reduce your answer to the lowest term. So let's say we have this problem. Add these two rational expressions, 4u over 12u to the fourth v squared and 6u plus 2v over 12u to the fourth v squared. The first thing that we're going to do is check the denominators. Are the denominators the same? Since our denominators are the same, then all we have to do is combine the numerators. We copy the common denominator and we add the numerators. And then we inspect if there are similar terms in the numerators. Notice that 4u and 6u are similar terms, so we can still continue simplifying this. Combining now 4u plus 6u, we get 10u, all the rest are copied. Now, as I have said, always check if you can still reduce this to the lowest term. Notice that 10 and 2 has a common factor of 2. So let's factor out that common monomial factor. By factoring out now our common monomial factor of 2, we get 10u divided by 2 equals 5u, and 2v divided by 2 equals v. By doing this, we can now cancel out the common factor between 2 and 12 because the operation now in the numerator is multiplication. But prior to writing this as factors, you cannot simply cancel the common factor between 10 and 12 because the operation at the numerator is still addition. You have to rewrite that into factors before you can perform cancellation of common factors. So by canceling out now the common factor between 12 and 2, we now arrive at 5u plus v over 6u to the fourth v squared. That is because if we divide the numerator by 2, we get 1. If we divide the denominator by 2, we get 6. And so, you now have this 6. So our correct answer, therefore, is 5u plus v over 6u to the fourth v squared. Let's have another example. Let's say we have 4x minus 5y over 16 v squared added to 2x plus 3y over 16x squared. Again, the first thing to do is inspect the denominators. You have 16x squared and 16x squared. That means these two rational expressions are similar. So what we can do is copy the common denominator and combine the numerators. So you now have 4x minus 5y combined with 2x plus 3y. And we just copied 16x squared. Now check if there are terms in the numerator that can be combined. Notice that you have here 4x and 2x, negative 5y and 3y, and we can still combine them. So by applying the commutative property, we can now rearrange the terms. 
And then applying the associative property, we can combine 4x and 2x as one group, negative 5y plus 3y as one group, and that will give us now 4x plus 2x equals 6x, negative 5y plus 3y equals negative 2y, and we just copy the common denominator. Then always remember to reduce your answer to the lowest term. Check if there are common factors. There is a common factor between 6 and 2, and that common factor is 2. So we can factor out that common monomial factor. There is a common factor between 2 and 16. So we can divide this by 2 to get 1, divide this by 2 to get 8. And finally, our answer is 3x minus y over 8x squared. Let's have another example. We have here p minus 6 over 5 plus 4p minus 3 over p plus 5. The first thing to do is check the denominators. You have a denominator here of 5 and a denominator of p plus 5. Since the denominators are different, we are going to find the LCD. So let's recall, how do we find the LCD? Let's say if you have 12 and let's say 8, what's the LCD between 12 and 8? In elementary, you learn how to do the prime factorization. You can rewrite this as 1 times 2 times 2 times 3. That's 12. And you can rewrite 8 as 1 times 2 times 2 times 2. And then you write in column those factors that are similar and just bring one of those. So bring 1, bring down 2, bring down another 2, and then bring down 3, and then bring down the other 2. And then you multiply whatever is the result, that's our LCD. So we get 12 times 4, 24. So that's how you perform LCD when you are dealing with whole numbers. When we are dealing with polynomials, we are going to do the same. We have 5 written as 1 times 5. You have p plus 5, which we can also write as 1 times p plus 5, where p plus 5 is considered as one factor. And then we bring down the 1, we bring down the 5, we bring down p plus 5, and then get the product. So our LCD, therefore, here is 1 times 5, which is 5, times p plus 5. This would now be the denominator that we are going to use in our next step. Let's do that. So for our next step, we now write this LCD, 5 times p plus 5, and we are going to divide this by 5. I want you to focus here because there's a strategy that you can use when dividing this. Notice that once you get the prime factorization and you get the LCD, you don't have to distribute this because we want this to be written in factored form. So with this as our denominator, let's write 5 times p plus 5. If we divide this by 5, if you divide that by 5, notice that you'll be able to cancel out this 5. So what is left is this p plus 5. So you have p plus 5 and then copy the p minus 6. That takes care of the first add -in. plus. In the second part, you are going to divide again the denominator 5 plus p plus 5 divided by p plus 5, which is now this denominator in the second add -in. Notice that you'll be able to cancel this out also, so the result is this 5, and then copy 4p minus 3. So in the future, when you have this factored form divided by that, all you have to do is cover whatever are the common, this 5 and 5, cover that one, and then get whatever is uncovered. It's p plus 5. Write that down and copy this numerator. And then for the second addend, p plus 5 and p plus 5 are common, so cover that one. That means cancel that out. What is left is 5, copy that 5, and then multiply by 4p minus 3. Okay, then let's continue. Now, it doesn't matter whether you write the p plus 5 or the p minus 6 first, because by commutative property, they are equivalent. You can interchange the order of the factors. Then what can we do now here? Notice that you have here a binomial times a binomial, and you have a monomial times a binomial. Since we have a binomial times a binomial here, we can perform the FOIL method. So p times p is p squared, p times 5 is 5p, negative 6 times p is negative 6p, negative 6 times 5 is negative 30. Copy that plus sign. 5 times 4p is 20p, then distribute one more time, 5 times negative 3 is negative 15. And then distribute also the 5 to the binomial p plus 5. So we now have this result. Then let's continue. Then what can we do with this result? Notice that 5p, negative 6p, 
and 20p are all similar terms. Since they are similar, we can combine them. 5p minus 6p is negative 1p. Negative 1p plus 20p is 19p. And then negative 30 minus 15 is negative 45. Just copy the p squared and copy the denominator. Now, since there is no more common factor between the numerator and the denominator, this is now the final answer. Let's have another example. Whenever you see this red banner, that's an indicator that the problem is a little bit challenging. So let's embrace the challenge. We have 3 over 7x squared plus 3x over 21x squared minus 28x plus 7. As usual, the first thing to do is look at the denominators. You have a monomial here, you have a trinomial, so they are different. What kind of trinomial is this? This is a quadratic trinomial. Take note of that because in the next step, we are going to get the least common denominator and we need to rewrite this in factored form. So let's get now the LCD of these two denominators. There's no problem with 7x squared because 7x squared is simply 7 and x squared. For this trinomial, we are going to multiply this 21 and this 7 to get 147 as the product of the two factors and the sum or difference of the two factors would be this middle term, negative 28. So what two factors, when multiplied, will result to 147, but when combined, will result to negative 28? From this form, it's very clear that 21 times 7 is 147, and 21 plus 7 is 28. But what we want is negative 28. Therefore, the two factors that we need are negative 21 and negative 7. Because if you combine negative 21 and negative 7, that will give us negative 28. When you multiply these two, negative times negative gives you positive, and the value is 147. So therefore, these are the two numbers that we need. So we can now rewrite this as 21x squared minus, we are going to split this 28x into negative 21x and negative 7x. Anyway, these two terms, will result to negative 28x. Copy the plus 7. And then we can perform factoring by grouping. We can group these two together, and we can group these two terms together. Common factor here is 21x. Divide these two to get x. Negative 21x divided by negative 21 is negative 1. Common factor is 7 minus 7. Negative 7x divided by negative 7 is positive x. 7 divided by negative 7 is negative 1. And then you notice that there's a common factor again of x minus 1. Factor that out. x minus 1 is the common factor. Then 21x times the quantity x minus 1 divided by x minus 1 will be able to cancel out x minus 1. So we are left with 21x. Here, we'll be able to cancel x minus 1. So we are left with negative 7. But notice that there's still a common factor here between 21 and 7. So we continue factoring that out, copy x minus 1, factor out 7, 21 divided by 7 is 3, copy x, negative 7 divided by 7 is negative 1. So these are now the factors of this denominator. So this denominator now is equal to, you have 7, this common here, then you have x minus 1, and 3x minus 1. We leave some space for x squared because there is nothing that is common with x squared from these factors. Then for our LCD, bring down the 7, bring down the x squared, bring down x minus 1, and bring down 3x minus 1. So let's continue. So we now copy this LCD here. Let's have a clean space now so you are not confused with a lot of writings. We are going to divide now this LCD by 7x squared. That means this 7x squared and that 7x squared would be cancelled out. So what would be left is this 3 times x minus 1 times 3x minus 1. That takes care of this part. Then copy the plus sign. For the second part, we are going to divide this least common denominator by this quadratic trinomial. But we know that the factors of this before was 7 times x minus 1 times 3x minus 1. So if you divide this LCD by this trinomial, the result would be x squared. 
So we copy the 3x times the x squared. So that's now the result. Let's continue. What are we going to do now here to simplify this? Notice that you have a monomial times a binomial times a binomial plus a monomial times a monomial. This part is easy because you just have to multiply 3x times x squared to get 3x cubed. But this part you have to distribute one at a time. So if you distribute 3 times x, you get 3x. 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. And then copy the second binomial plus the product of these two, 3x to the third power. Then we have a binomial times a binomial here, which we can simplify further using the FOIL method. So using now the FOIL method, 3x times 3x is 9x squared. 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. Copy the x. The negative 3 times positive 3x is negative 9x. Negative 3 times negative 1 is positive 3. And then copy 3x cubed. Also in the denominator, you perform the FOIL method and you will get this denominator. Notice now that negative 3x and negative 9x are similar and negative 7x cubed and negative 21x cubed are similar. So we can combine them together. And notice also that 3x cubed is the highest degree, so we can rearrange the order in descending order. So this is now what we have. Copy 3x cubed first, then you have 9x squared. Combine these two to get negative 12x and copy the positive 3. The term with the highest degree in the denominator is 21x to the fourth. You can combine these two to get negative 28x cubed and copy 7x squared. Now, since there is no more common factor between the numerator and the denominator, then we now say that our final answer is this one. Now, so at this point, you can pause the video. I'm going to show you two problems that you can work on. Here's the first one. Try subtracting 7n over 3 minus 7 over n minus 3. You can play the video once you have the answer, so you can see the answer in the next slide. Okay, let me show you the right answer now. So here is our answer. Now let's have one more problem to practice with. We have 4 over p plus 8 combined with 4p over p plus 4. You can pause the video and answer this. Okay, once you have the answer, here is the answer to this problem. Feel free to write your comments in our comment section.